My name is Dr. Paul Jaley. I am the senior pastor of the New Testament Church in Plymouth, Massachusetts. I am sharing with you some thoughts in honor of my good friend, David Manuel. I first met David Manuel, like many people did, through the pages of the book, The Light and the Glory, published by he and Peter Marshall about the time of our bicentennial as a nation in 1976 or 77, when many people were unaware of the roots of America's liberty. Though I enjoyed the nuggets of factual confirmation of the providential hand of God in our nation's history, what struck me most was the style in which it was written. As a young teacher of high school students in a Christian academy, I enjoyed the fact that the author drew you in through a mastery of storytelling techniques. I would find out years later that this style was the artistic work of David Manuel, combining thorough research with storytelling. And though I met Peter Marshall at several conferences over the years to which I was also a speaker on similar topics of America's Christian history, I met David Manuel not in the context of meetings recounting our history, but in the context of prayer meetings and solemn assemblies. What united David and I was not simply the facts of America's heritage, but the truth that unless the people of God repent for their sin, what hope is there for the nation at large? It was this emphasis on repentance in God's house that stood in contrast to the more popular trend of blaming the nation's congressional houses or the White House as the cause of our problems, when in fact, they were a mere reflection of a compromised church. When I think of my pastoral visits more recently with David, over the past two to three years as he attended our church when in New England with Shelley, his wife, I remember each one was focused on some aspect of prayer. David not only understood the primacy of personal prayer, as taught in the scriptures, but also corporate, selfless kingdom prayer. That God would revive a community and a nation if the focus was on Christ's kingdom and not merely our own needs. This kingdom type of prayer, resting in the Lord's prayer, required greater self-sacrifice, a deeper work of the cross, and putting the needs of others ahead of your own. All themes that had dominated David's writing for decades. I remember at times discussing what God was showing me with David and having David delight in it as if God was showing him the exact same thing at that moment. He seemed to ever be a child before the throne and always made you feel as if you were teaching him. The famous painting of the Continental Congress on their knees in prayer in September of 1774 with Pastor Jacob Duche exhorting the delegates from Psalm 35 in prayer will always remind me of David. As a generation now, we have lost key spiritual pioneers and generals like Bill Bright, D. James Kennedy, Chuck Colson, and Howard Phillips, to name a few. And now, of course, David himself. The torch is clearly being passed to those of us who must embrace it. And this generational transfer, though not being pressed upon us in the time period we wish, is under the hand of God's timing. It is now time to remember this legacy and run with it. For me, David Manuel's unique legacy, among all those I've mentioned and many more that could be mentioned, is the mantle of intercessory prayer in general and the focus on our repentance and the repentance of God's people in particular. As I discussed and reviewed his script to portray to the screen the story of Valley Forge to our nation again, we both understood that this was critical to our nation's future. Just as the historic experience of Valley Forge turned a defeated army into a victorious one. So God is forging his church through judgment and suffering that we might learn how to fight spiritually and begin winning there, primarily in the spiritual realm with our walk with him and then secondarily on earth. It is this key truth that David develops in one of his last books, The Last Awakening, A Call to Repentance. So as we remember his journalistic style of communing with God, may we learn that lesson well, and more importantly, may we practice it scripturally as we focus on Jesus' emphasis and prayer that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Shelley, in the day...